Today we profile Rick Forzano Sr., affectionately known as Coach. He wrote at least one handwritten thank you letter each day for over 60 years. It's a lot of letters. He grew up in Akron, Ohio. He was 4'11 and weighed 90 pounds as a freshman in high school. He played high school basketball with a man named Bo Schembechler and another one, Eric Korsichin. He began coaching football at age 19. He was the assistant coach at the Naval Academy from 1959 to 1963, during which time he recruited a young high school quarterback from Cincinnati. He was being recruited by Michigan, Notre Dame, Ohio State, everybody. And Rick went to Roger Staubach and said, Roger, if you come to the U.S. Naval Academy, you will win the Heisman Trophy, and someday the Navy will name an aircraft carrier after you. Roger Staubach went to the U.S. Naval Academy, ultimately won a Heisman Trophy. Roger kept calling Coach Forzano every month until 2019 when he died and said, Coach, Where's my aircraft carrier? Coach would say, Roger, I'm now working on a tugboat to be named after. Another assistant coach had a son named Billy, an eight-year-old son named Billy. Billy was the water boy for this Naval Academy team. They paid Billy a nickel a day. Billy would sit in and watch game film with all of the coaches at eight years old. Ultimately, Coach Forzano gave Billy his first coaching job in the NFL as a tight end coach with the Detroit Lions in the mid 70s. Billy became Bill Belichick, legendary New England Patriots coach. The coach, was the head coach at University of Connecticut from 64 to 65, the Naval Academy from 69 to 72, and the Detroit Lions head coach from 74 to 76. The first time that Coach Forzano took his Naval squad to Notre Dame, South Bend, Indiana, to play the Fighting Irish, he tells a story that back then, if a college game ended with a tie, in a tie, there was no overtime. Rick was not Catholic. He was very Christ-centered, but not Catholic. And with about 10 seconds left to go in this game, Notre Dame and the Naval Academy are tied. Notre Dame's going to try a 45-yard field goal. It was an offensive lineman, was their kicker, named Monty Stickles. The kid had never kicked a field goal longer than 35 yards. There's a strong wind against him. They're going to try a 45-yard field goal. And Coach Forzano's on the sideline thinking, all of this touchdown Jesus, the grotto, all these candles, all these rosary beads, the nuns, the priests, the bishops, this is all hocus pocus. We're going to get out of here with a tie. So they line up. Stickles gets ready, and Forzano calls timeout to ice them, to make them think. They get lined up again. Stickles gets ready, and he makes the sign of the cross. Coach says, can't go that fast from the head to the foot. But then, Jack, I see the referee makes the sign of the cross. That's when I knew I was in trouble. And Stickles kicks the 45-yard field goal to win the game. From 1974 to 76, he was the head coach of the Detroit Lions. One day, William Clay Ford, the owner of the Lions, called him and said, Coach, would you go to the Rouge and talk to the men in the plant? Sure, anything you want. He was the owner. So he's walking with the plant manager, and they're boom, boom, boom. And Coach Forzano says to the plant manager, what, what can these guys make? Well, if they've been here 20 years and they work with some overtime, they can make $50,000 a year. 
Jack, that's what they were paying me to be the head coach of the Lions. I thought I was the highest paid guy in all of Birmingham here. I was making what the line workers were making. All that's changed today, Jack, is this: these coaches are being paid a few more zeros than I used to get paid. He had great self-deprecating humor about himself, and he was a fantastic storyteller. He coached under the legendary Paul Brown. He coached with Bill Walsh, Lou Holtz, Raymond Berry, and as mentioned before, Bill Belichick. For 12 years, he was a TV color analyst for college football. And as I mentioned at the start, he wrote at least one handwritten thank you letter each day for 60 years. Starting in 1978, he and his son Rick started a manufacturer's rep business here in Detroit. In 2003, he wrote me his philosophy of life. My philosophy of life was ingrained in me at a very young age by two loving parents who immigrated here from the old country. They had little education, but a lot more common sense and smarts than most people. They gave me the basis of my life's philosophy by stressing the following. Everything you have on this earth is on loan from God. Next to God, Family should be your number one priority. Feel lucky who you are, what you are, and where you are. You are no better than anyone else, and they are no better than you. Be proud to be an American. It's the greatest country in the world. I have tried, and I stress, I have tried every day to live by these teachings and to be a living example for Christ. There are some days that I've been somewhat successful. However, there are days that I have failed miserably a human frailty of mine. Quite frankly, I will never be considered a great football coach. But I've always attempted to practice what my mentor, Paul Brown, one of the greatest coaches ever, taught me. And that, that is, you must give your best effort at all times in spite of any obstacles, problems, or trials, because every day you must be able to look in the mirror of life and honestly say, I gave my best effort today. Jack, God has always been a part of my life to some degree. However, I have discovered I take more walks with God as I get older. I firmly believe that God answers prayer, forgives my sins, and that he watches over me and my family each and every day. I'm a very lucky man. I've been blessed and continued to be richly blessed by God. Rick Forzano. That's the story of Coach Rick Forzano Sr. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again, please remember, with God, anything is possible. Spoke.